Today we're going to draw a giraffe. So we're going to draw lightly. We're going to use a line to get an idea where the neck's going to go. And as you can tell, it's not a straight line. It's actually a flattened out S. Curves down, curves back up that way. Drawing lightly is great because you can really lay it out. We're going to sketch the head in. It's kind of a triangle shape. The head one end cut off, flat on top. Now it's becoming more of a diamond shape. And we'll put the nose area in like that. So we'll widen that a little bit. And so there's the nose and the mouth area there. Okay, so there's the neck. For the body, we're going to put in an oval. Let me just adjust the camera so I can see what I'm doing. Perfect. Gets a little more thick towards the body. The front legs, we'll put in an oval line for the first leg. We're drawing the stick figures at this point. And we'll draw the hoof here. So when we're drawing the hoof, going to be a little bit hard to see. Actually, we'll draw another leg separately. We're going to use our three-dimensional shapes. We've got our long sphere. I don't know what you call that. Three-dimensional oval is here. If we were to draw lines on it, it would look like this, just to help visualize that. So that's the front part of the leg. It's going to come down so here's what we have so far. We have the stick figure. And we're going to draw in the joint area. For now, we're just going to add some cylinders. We'll connect that to some poles. Some more poles. Connected to another cylinder. And then as it gets to the bottom, so this is half a sphere laying on the ground. There's that curved line. But you see, when we started it, we started with an oval. Instead of an oval for the hoof, it's going to be more of a tear drop shape. And then we'll round out the top. So this teardrop is the part that's actually laying on the ground, touching the ground, I should say. Then we'll split it, and it's going to move up. So we've got that. And then we'll round out the top. And then we're going to add a little more meat to this part. We're going to round off, use those curved lines. Now it looks a little more organic, less like a robot. So a little, little tricky to see in this, for this size, but we'll do the best we can. So we're going to have that one bent. The one in the back will be Straight up. I'll just make this shape now for the foot. Back leg. It's going to look like that. Kind of think of these giraffe's legs as like a dog. Dog's leg bends this way and then it comes back up front. And we'll have the the very far back leg. 
looking kind of similar. And the tail is another S. Okay, so now we've laid that out, it makes it a little bit easier to draw. So the giraffe has kind of a hump part of the neck here. We'll just use some curved lines to draw that part in. And now we're going to darken up that neck a little bit. It's coming down and it's going to wrap right into that hump. And then curve to the back and down. This area we're going to, well you know what, let's wait on that. Let's draw this front leg just as we did before. We're going to use those shapes. So we'll put this sphere shape here. And I'm not going to draw all of it out like we did before, but now you have the idea of what we're doing. right down to the hoof area and this back leg is going to be a little meaty towards the back and we've got those cylinders in there as we did before While we're drawing, you want to think about observation, observations that you've made just from looking at drafts, maybe from the zoo. And one thing that always sticks out to me when I see a, a, a draft up close is it just, they just don't look like they should work um, from an engineering point of view. They just seem unstable, but they're very stable. But I keep that in mind as I'm drawing all these parts. I think about the fact that it, to me, it looks unstable. So I want to keep that in mind. And when I get to parts of the, the leg that are, are stick out like this, it's just helpful to think of how bony and how dense those bones must be to carry all of the weight of the draft. Now that I've got these two legs in, now we can draw the belly. It kind of, this oval is kind of pointing up in this direction. So we're going to wrap it down. Going to kind of go up to the body that way. So far it looks like a horse and a dinosaur. But we'll just keep drawing. Those curved lines are helping us out. Curve again, curve down. And then we'll, we can add a little bit of shading in a moment, but we're going to wrap this down thicker towards the body, thinner as it goes down, almost like a dog's tail so far. And then we'll add some hair. And I'm going to add kind of a bell shape. I want to keep that curve. So we've got some bell shapes going down. And we'll just use the side of the pencil and fill those in. Okay, let's go back to the face. And we're going to add the letter U on the top for those antennas, I don't know what else to call them, some curved lines for the top and then they get very wide as they go down and then the ears are going to come out, some curved lines so the ears come out 
like this. Then they go, you could just go straight up and curve it down if you wanted to. If you wanted to add a little more of an organic element to it, it kind of goes up, dips, and back up. So this goes this way. Kind of see that S again. And then maybe it comes in like this, and then it can go down like that. I'm going to put those eyes in. They've got very big eyes and they're pretty much on the sides of their face. I mean, not really on the sides, but they're far apart. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Put two curved lines for the nostrils. Now we'll darken in. We've kind of laid it all out. I'm going to add a little more dimension to this side of the face just to make it fill it out a little bit. And then for the hair, we're going to use lines. We'll curve up a little bit. We'll curve down a little bit. We just want, to, want it to be random. You don't want horizontal lines going all the way down. So for the pattern of the skin, or the fur, the hair, I don't know what I'm trying to say, we'll, we'll add some different shapes. And it's kind of like puzzle pieces. Okay, add some rectangles, some octagon shapes. Random is the way to go. Smaller as it gets towards the front, to the top of the head. Loose is fine. You don't want to be too controlling of, of your drawings. There's times when you want to be super tight and super intentional, and there's other times to just loosen up and let it be what it's going to be. I'm going to shade in those patterns and I'm really not worried about staying in the lines. I'm going to get a little bit darker as it goes towards the top. We'll shade in those hoofs area, the hoofs. We'll shade in the top here. And then we'll add an oval for some shading. Once again, nice and loose. I'll throw some lines in there for the hair. Hair for the grass, I should say. And then we'll just do a little bit of shading. It's going to be hard to see a lot of it. We don't need a lot because we've got that pattern in there. But this back leg is going to be under the belly. This belly we're going to treat as though it were a sphere without those lines of course. So when we shade we think about what we're, we think about each part of the body as a different object. So if it looks like a cube, we'll shade it in as we would shade in a cube. If it's a sphere, then we'll shade it in that way. 
So the belly kind of wraps under that leg. Maybe a little bit in the back. A little bit towards the back of the neck. And just want to darken in just a few parts. Nice and light. Quick lines. Lines, quick lines are great. It just keeps it a little more fresh, less controlled. You labor over it too much, you can kind of take the life out of it. So I find it's it's best to go with your gut. The more you practice, the more your gut's right. And you don't have to think about it as much. But I think it's good even in the beginning stages to just get used to being a little more use, loose and uh, letting, letting the drawing happen, so to speak. Okay, well that is our drawing of the draft today. Thanks for drawing with me, and I will see you in the next video.